go. Oh, have people joining. Welcome, welcome. Zoom does this thing where it kind of puts people in in five. So you're kind of, there's some who are waiting there for like 30 seconds and then there's some who are just, just joined. Yeah. Did you do many of these kind of things, David, during? No, no, no. No, no, no. no it's, um, yeah, it's just getting the time, honestly. It's yeah, just, yeah. It's murder at the moment. Oh. You know, I'm supposed to be retired and I'm, I still don't have enough time to go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> and golf. <laughs> and, well, yeah, but I'd if I'm honest, I'd rather go fishing than play golf. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Golf's just a social thing, isn't it? With all the golf can be <laughs> <laughs> Right. I did, I did, I did, I did, I'm, I'm playing on Monday in Bob's day. He's got his, Bob Wilson's got his... his mm. uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I'm playing in that. I can't wait for that. I think I think Aaron's playing in it as well. Oh, cool. All right, no, that'd be good. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say a couple of words about Willow. And uh, obviously you can say anything you want, David, clearly. But, nice yeah. One. All right, I think we will... Let me see, hang on, just give it 10 seconds. Numbers are just going up. All right, let's go for it. We're recording. Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, another AST event, um, which is also the second part of the AGM, which my Colin, colleague, sorry, Glyn, will, will explain. Thank you for attending. It's quite nice weather out there, to be honest, so I appreciate some of you might want to be in a beer garden rather than listening to us, but we do appreciate it. Thank you to all our new members as well that have joined recently. Um, and yeah, thank you for sort of attending after what's been quite a tricky few, few weeks for the Arsenal. But before we kind of go into all that, I'd just like to welcome our guest, David Seaman, who you can see in front of you. David, thank you so much for joining and giving up your time. Pleasure, mate. Pleasure. So we'll, we'll go into kind of David's career a little bit and got a few bits to ask him and we'll try and have some audience participation as well. But before we start that, we do have to finish the second part of our AGM. So, Glyn, over to you to take over for the next few minutes. Thanks very much. Welcome, everybody. Thanks very much for attending. Uh, as, as you might know, this is our adjourned annual general meeting because we had our first annual general meeting in person on the 24th of April um, and we passed four resolutions at that meeting um, and we had to adjourn it because we hadn't got the accounts signed in time because, of, as, as I think we mentioned, we changed our auditors. So it just took a bit longer getting the new auditors on board with, with the way we work. So we then adjourned the AGM till this evening uh, now that everyone's had a chance to look at the accounts and to uh, decide about uh, reappointing the society's auditors. So um, I'll now declare the, the new, the, the adjourned annual general meeting open. We absolutely have a quorum. We have plenty of proxies who have uh, kindly voted. Um, so we are quorate. Just to remind people, previously we approved uh, the four resolutions. The first one being that we don't have to do a full professional audit. Uh, as we normally do. Um, the second one, that uh, third and fourth ones were that Zach and Akil and Chloe were re-elected. Um, and now we are putting the new resolutions. Um, and the first one is to receive and adopt the accounts for 12 month period ending 31 October, 2022. So these accounts now have been with people. Um, and I just wonder if anyone wants to show by putting up uh, anything in the chat or the Q&A. Does anyone have any questions on the accounts um, that we have put forward? Either raise your hand or put something in the chat. Because um, uh, if they do, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, I can't see any, so I presume not. So um, I will put that to the meeting now. The, the, the people of president on, online obviously can't vote, but I can tell you, I've got about 70 odd proxies in favour of the accounts. I have one against. I intend to vote those because they're in my favour in, in, in favour of the accounts. So I therefore declare that resolution passed. So the second resolution, the last one for this evening, is to confirm the appointment of the society's auditors. So this is Streets, our new auditors this year, done a very good job. Uh, so before I put that resolution, does anyone have any questions about the appointment of Streets? Uh, firm and chartered accountants, uh, we've been pleased with their work, they've been very helpful. 
I can't see anything in the Q&A. So yet again, I will use the proxies I have in my favour to vote in favour of those. Um, and uh, I declare that resolution carried. So uh, thank you very much. That is the end of the formal business, the annual general meeting. So thank everyone for attending both here and then. Um, I've got something in the Q&A. Um, oh yeah, it's about a question for David. So we'll come on with that later on. Come so. On can you, uh, I, guys, can you see me? Because I've lost yeah. the sight of you. All right. Yeah, okay. you're all good. We can see you bright. And I can see your eyes, though. You do look, you're trying to find us all, aren't you? I can see you. We can, we can see you. I pressed the button you went missing. All <laughs> oh, right, well, you're still there, so don't right. you know. So when... <laughs> <laughs> right. um, uh, should we talk about two minutes on Willow, then, before yeah, we start? Yeah, um, um, some of some of you may know, you may have heard of the Willow Foundation, which is the charity formed by Bob and Megs Wilson um, many years ago, and um, who provide um, days out and memories for uh, seriously ill young adults. Um, some of you might know, so I'm a trustee of Willow, um, and David is an ambassador for Willow, and we're very very grateful to have him help us who does a fantastic job for the charity we really are really grateful and David has given his time tonight in return for donation to Willow so um, again thank you very much for doing that David and if any of you want to look at Willow you'll know you'll see that we have as the AST have um, donated to Willow um, we will be doing again in the future it's one of the charities that we do donate to so they do a fantastic job so um, please look at the Willow website it's easily available if you need any further information. So that's me. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, David. Over to you. Thank you, Glenn. David, have you got us back? Can you see us yet? Or are you still? No. no? Okay, <laughs> well, I'll tell you if you disappear. Well, All right, then. if you disappear, no, I'm not sure how I'll tell you. But anyway, <laughs> we, we, we can see you. But I mean, I just want to start actually talking about Willow and talking about the job sort of Bob and Megs kind of do. I mean, you've obviously been involved for a while. You've known yeah. Bob. You're, you're pretty much most of your career i mean how much of a great job do they do oh it's it's, it's a fantastic job they do and, it, and it's been non-stop for them as well um you know and like you say I, I was i was involved right from the from day one you know obviously when um when anna passed away um they set up the foundation um and it's just gone from strength to strength you know and, and like we said when, when you see the smile on people's faces you know because i've been part of the special days a few times as well and when you see the smile on their faces, you just know that it's all worthwhile because there's a lot of hard work. You know, not only do they raise the funds, but they also arrange the special days as well. You know, so it's not like they just raise a check and then pass it over to someone. Um, they actually arrange the days. And um, yeah, like I said, the, the smiles on their faces is, is all that matters. And it, and it really does. It, it helps. It helps a lot. Yeah, yeah. And what's your kind of role there? Do you sort of just, you go to sort of the events, you support the events, potentially? Yeah, I'm, days. I'm an ambassador or stroke patron. Yeah. And I just, you know, I help as much as I can, you know, by, you know, I've had golf days um, in Portugal and the funds have gone straight to Willow um, and me attending a lot of events that they have, you know, and it's been just because it's been over such a long time. Um, it's just been great to be involved, um, you yeah. know, and, and Bob's, you know, obviously Bob's my, uh, my my big mate. You know, he was my coach for 15 yeah. years, including a couple at QPR. You know, and he's been my best man twice. So um, <laughs> obviously <laughs> I love him a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember that famous time. Was it the 2002 double when you made sure you got him from the stands for that famous photo with the yeah. with Stuart and Richard as well? Yeah, that's right. You know, and that was that was it was special that, you know, because there was three goalies there that all got a medal as well, you know. So, you know, and it was great for Bob because he he's, he was our coach for so long. You know, he, he left when I left. Um, you know, and, and it was the end of a, a mega era because you know, Bob was there before I came to the club, you know, when Lukey was there, you know, he even coached Pat Jennings, you know, which is you know, people Bad. say, you know, like, how could you coach Pat Jennings? He's like, well, I just ticked him along nicely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, great man. We've had we've had Bob at a, an event we had a couple of years ago over Christmas where we raised money for funds and Bob sort of it was at the Emirates and Bob yeah. came and did what Bob did for an hour and entertained the crowd and he was just yeah. great. He really was no, great. He's, and, He's a proper pro as well, you know. He's brilliant at it, you know. And he's, um, yeah, he's, um, he's, yeah. I, obviously, I love him that much, you know. He's, I can't, can't speak highly enough of him. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's loved by the Arsenal fan base for sure. 
Um, so, David, we, before we kind of went on air, you, you sort of said you're you're busier now than you were when you were playing. <laughs> oh, it, play. it's it's so weird, you know. I get I I get a lot of requests, and you know, and I find it hard to turn them down sometimes, you know. So, yeah, like we were saying, I, I still don't get enough time to go fishing, you know, which is what I love. You know, the, the golf really has taken a bit of a backseat, you know. And I still play um, quite quite a bit, but I play off off eight, you know, so I have to play a bit, but. Um, you know, it's now being more local or sometimes it'll be a charity event, you know, like on this Monday coming at Brocket Hall, we've got Bob, Bob's um, Willow Foundation Golf Day and there's a lot of the old players going up there. A couple of the current players are going to be up there as well. So mm. that'll be fun. And that's that's what I'm doing now. Although <laughs> I've just been made president of my local club, Sanford Springs, you know, so okay. I'll be nipping up there every now and then. But um, that's a great honour. I took over from the legendary Dickie Davies. Oh, wow. I actually worked with Bob. Well, you know, so you know, obviously Dickie wow. passed away recently, and um, that's been the president. So that's uh, that's quite nice. Big honour, yeah, yeah. And 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 most importantly, dancing on ice happened. Anything else <laughs> on the agenda? Um, <laughs> no, 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 not yet. We, so we did. So I did dancing on ice. Um, and you know what? It's the most nervous I have ever felt in my life. Being in the tunnel, waiting to go out and skate live on TV knowing that there was like 14 million people going to be watching it. It was terrifying. And what is funny as well is that when I saw Tony doing Strictly, um, <laughs> I texted him straight after his first dance and I said to him, I said, I bet that's the worst you've ever felt for nerves in your life. He went, exactly, goalie. He says it was horrible. And it is so bad because we're so far out of our comfort zone. Yeah. And, and especially with the ice, you know you can stack it at any time. Yeah. You can pull over and within like within a second and and I was watching Tony and I noticed that he he tripped like almost straight away to his routine and and he and he, he, he like he lost because we don't know how to get it back you know we're not we're not used to those conditions you know give me a penalty shoot time from to blooming 60 million and I'd be like cool as cucumber uh, but, um, uh, no doing that was was a different uh, experience and then I recently did the mask dancer with my wife Frankie, and um, oh. that was all right. I got a big mask on, so not not everybody could tell it was it felt a little bit safer. <laughs> yeah, and just on Tony to to make it worse. Didn't you then turn up in the second or third week to, in the audience <laughs> to make know. it worse? You thought you were sitting yeah. in the front row. <laughs> I know. Me and Dicko actually did a VT with him. You know, we actually yeah, yeah, I saw that yeah. in the training studio. That was cool. And then and then to go and watch him, you know, live as well was it was yeah. brilliant. And by then. People had started to 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 love him because you know first of all they, they were like oh my god how bad is he and then they realised that he was getting better and better and he was just giving it all and it, and the, the favourite thing for me was that Tony was just being Tony you know he was just doing his stuff and it was great and Arsenal fans were just being Arsenal fans and supporting one of their own <laughs> I know yeah and the Tottenham fans were doing it because they were laughing at Tony so but no but the Arsenal fans certainly voted more than the Tottenham fans. <laughs> Yeah, well, we were saying well, done... say that name on here. I shouldn't be, should I? <laughs> well, we, we've done our fair share of laughing about them over <laughs> recent weeks and years. Yeah. Oh, I, I think it's fine. Um, so on a kind of serious note, obviously you you are also doing some work with Arsenal and stuff. And I think I think were you were you? I saw a picture of Aaron Ramsdale's contract signing. I don't know if you were on the if you were on the FaceTime with him or so. I saw a picture of that earlier on today. Yeah. But you're obviously still involved with Arsenal. Tell us a little bit about that and how that came about and sort of what that entails. Yeah, I did. I, did, uh, I actually did a, an interview with Aaron uh, yesterday. I think it was. Um, that's going to be out on Arsenal TV, I think. And um, you know about his contract, about yeah. some saves and things that he's made, and just having a general goalkeeping chat. Um, you know, but what I do at Arsenal, I, I go in probably once a week. Um, and I help coach with the under 21s and the under 18s. Um, and it's it's nice, it's nice to go back. You know, obviously I chat with Aaron quite a bit. Um, but he's got his own coach in Iniac. He was a really good coach. Um, you know, so it's hard for me not, to, you know, because I'm like, oh, I want to go over there, but then I want to because I want to be here, you know. So it's it's hard yeah. at the moment. I'm I'm really enjoying going in there. And uh, yeah, it's it's nice to go back to the training ground, aren't if I'm honest, you know. And, I remember going back when I first started a couple of years, about, yeah, about two years ago, I think it was. And I went into like where the first team were training and I could see like Aaron, you know, and, and all the goalies training in the same area that I used to train. It was like such a weird feeling. Yeah. Like seeing him there, I was like, wow. I said, there's a lot of my sweat in that grass over there. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it seems like it's been quite an effort from Arsenal recently to get 
old players back. And there's, you know, you, if you look at Arsenal social media, you'll always see a player, you know, whether it's Gilberto recently, Colo Torre was back there. Um, you see ex-players just going back. There seems to be quite an effort to to keep those old players coming back and be part of the family. Yeah. Have you sort well, of and he, and he's nice. That? He's nice to be to be asked to go back as well. Um, you know, because you don't want to just turn up and then you know, it being a bit awkward, but mm. um, you know, a lot of a lot of the players are coming back. You know, I'm, I think I'm the other one's going back and actually coaching. You know, doing a bit with the uh, with the young lads and that. But it's it's just something that because I've got so much experience in my head, mm. you know, and it's nice to pass it on. You know, and and I've got you know I've had good times, I've had bad times, and you know if I can help any of them, then you know it just makes me feel better, and um, and I'm sure that they they appreciate it as well. Absolutely. And obviously talking about Aaron Ramsdale, today the sort of contract was announced. Yep. Great news, great news for Arsenal. I found it quite interesting with his video, though, because he, he talked in the sort of announcement video about, you know, when he first came and he goes, I didn't expect anyone to be thrilled when I turned up for quite big money, having been relegated twice. But I mean, yeah. how the, his development and his kind of stature, I guess, at Arsenal has just been amazing, hasn't it? It has, um, you know, and I, I spoke to him about, you know, the similar feelings that I had when I first joined the club, you know, when everybody was loving Lukey and mm. they were singing, singing songs about that he was better than me and all that, you know, so it was, you know, but that happened, that happened a lot, you know, and it was, um, the one story I'll tell you is, is so when it, when it all fell through when I was at QPR, I had to go back to QPR and then wait until the end of the season and then I think QPR played Arsenal and the Arsenal fans were singing at me, you'll never play for Arsenal. <laughs> and, I was, and I was like, I bet I do, because I've already signed the contract. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and that, and was like, uh, played a few times as well. <laughs> I know, yeah, just a few. But um, yeah, and with Aaron, it, it was a similar sort of situation. You know, fans were questioning, mm. you know, why are we paying this much for a, a number two? Because everybody thought that Bert Lino was going to be the number one for quite a while. Um, and then as soon as Aaron got in, you know, I think everybody saw what what he was capable of, and you know, even even with all this relegation talk that's that's with him, you know, I I, I turn I think that's a real positive because he's had to play a lot of games under pressure. You know, the pressure of being relegated is massive, you know, and I'd much rather be going for a, a title than being in a relegation battle. I did it with Birmingham City before I came to QPR, and it's not nice because you you're aware that it's people's livelihoods that could be affected here. If you drop down a division, and um, you know all, all that he's he's done, he's played lots of games under that sort of pressure. But the good thing about it is he's he's performed because he's been the player of the, of the season for every club that he's been at. You know, so mm. he's doing something right. Mm. Uh, what's it, what's it about his kind of communication skills and his personality? Because you know, Bert Lennon's a great shot stopper, but maybe a bit quiet. Emmy yeah. Martinez, obviously, incidentally, we've seen now as a massive personality, but we maybe didn't quite see that at Arsenal for a while. We, we saw it right at the end and maybe it was a little bit too late, but how important is it to have that personality and not be scared to tell your centre-backs or your full-backs where to be? Yeah, you've, you've got to be able to do that. You've got to be mentally tough. Um, you know, and, and like you just said, in Lino and Martinez there, you've got two guys that are like at each end of the spectrum. <laughs> you know, something in the middle is perfect. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, because obviously Burnt was a little bit quiet. Martinez, for my life, is a little bit too noisy. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, um, but with Aaron, <laughs> I feel that we've got someone that, that is in the middle. You know, he, he's got his own personality as well. Yeah. Um, he's shown that. You know, and he's shown that with the way that he, he interacts with fans as well. You know, not just the home fans, not just the Arsenal, Arsenal fans. It's it's the away fans as well. You know, we um, we actually made an advert for for your chips are yeah, the, yeah. the, uh, the thing at Leicester. So yeah. Yeah, he, he knows how to work it, but he knows how to work it in the right way. Um, yeah. He's not doing it to be flash, and he's doing it to help him concentrate because you know, he's, he's, he's admitted it himself where he finds it sometimes a little bit difficult to keep his concentration. So he'll end up singing songs with the fans and everything. And yeah. while he's, he's looking at the ball and, and, and keeping his concentration yeah. and he finds that that helps him. So I think he actually said in an interview, he said that, because I think the question he was asked was, when you do all that, does that not distract you? But he actually said, well, no, it motivates me because I can't yeah. do that and then make an error and concede a goal because they'll kill me because I've just been bantering with them and now I've conceded. So it makes me more determined to keep yeah. a clean sheet. 
but that's it that's that's the different ways of making sure that you're on it you know and and i used to do i used to do something totally different where i would put a line from wherever the ball went through me to the middle of my goal you know and that that helped me like move from side to side whether i pushed up a little bit or dropped back you know depending on where the ball was you know just trying to think of that to keep me from losing my concentration you know and thinking about the flies that were coming out of the grass and would I be able to get one of them to put on my hook for fishing and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you deal with sort of away fans or and, and things like that, you know, that kind of... Because they're right behind you and they're not, you know, they're not afraid to tell you things, I'm sure. No, they're not, you know, but if you... If you if you interact with them and then you have a bit of a laugh with them, then they like that, you know, they're, they're okay with that, you know, that you don't get... The only obviously the only place is, is Tottenham where it gets a little bit naughty, but um, you know, everywhere else it's normally really well humoured. Um, mm. you know, now I used to like I say, I used to get involved with them and give them a bit back, and that's that's what Aaron does. You know, he, he, he says, Well, if they're giving me stick, I can give them some as well. Oh, well, fair enough. And then talking about sort of this season, you mentioned that it's maybe easy, it's easier to be in a title race than a relegation battle. And of course, Aaron and, and the rest of the lads were in a title race. And, oh, yeah. you know, um, up till probably recently. I mean, I guess, you know, the, the question everyone's been saying is is that B word, you know, did they bottle it? Or was it just a case of Man City or just an elite team, which we saw last night, by the way? I mean, how great were yeah. they then? So well, what are your sort of thoughts on the title race? Yeah, you know, know? If- you know, when people use that bottle it and everything, I'm like, oh, well, well, by the way, guys, you you lot never even got anywhere near sniffing the cork, so don't give it all that. You know, so, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. No, you know, so if it wasn't for us, you know, this season would have been over at Christmas, even before the World Cup. Um, you know, so it was, it's not a case of that. It's a case of making, taking a lot of positives out of that and out of this season. And it's, we've been chased down by a mega team. You know, there's no denying that. You know, we're talking the night after, you know, they, they absolutely hammered Real Madrid. Yeah. You know, so when you when you take into account that, and then the players that they've got that are on the bench, and the, and even the players on the bench, they're all in form and mega stars in their own right, you know, and mega players. Um, you know, so we, we need to turn this season, what we've just had, into a real positive and now start believing that right now we are capable of, of going for the league, you know, of being in contention because we haven't been in this situation for a long time. But now we've shown that we can, you know, okay, we didn't get it over the finish line, but next season, let's make sure that we have another go at it, you know, and, and don't just drop off. Obviously, the bigger clubs, not the bigger club, but the big clubs are going to be improving. You know, you look at Chelsea and the, the players they've got, you know, the new manager coming in, Man United will strengthen, Liverpool will strengthen, Man City are where they are, you know, and, and so we've got to stay with them. You know, we haven't got to let them just take over from us. You know, we, we've had a fantastic season, you know, and anybody, any Arsenal fan would have taken where we are or where we're going to finish up at the start of this season. And, you know, think back to your playing career when you've suffered disappointments. And I guess when I think of that, I think of 99 maybe, which was obviously very disappointing, losing the semi-final and then, then the league. But yeah. how, how as a player, I mean, how long... Do you feel down for? Is it? Do you feel down for half the summer, quarter of the summer? Then do you? When do you start oh. to? What's the? How do you deal with it mentally? You get on with it. You get on with it, and you know that you know. And especially when 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 I was at Arsenal, you know, we we were expected to win things. You know, so we were in contention all, nearly all the time. You know, and and that's where we've got to get back to. You know, Arsenal have got to get back to this mental attitude of like, right, we are we have got to be in contention of of winning the league or of winning a trophy, you know, and, and it's now a realistic um, chance of winning one. It's not, you know, it's not just going to be a one-off because the team that we've got and the squad that we've got is getting better. You know, we've got a great mix of experienced players and then all the youngsters that are coming through, you know, it's just so, it's so exciting, I feel, you know, and, and they're gaining, you know, you even think of Saka now as almost like an experienced player. Mm. And how old is he? <laughs> yeah, 21 or whatever. Yeah. I know, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's the same. how good we are. That's how good we're getting. So I think, you know, for me, there's a lot more to come. Yeah, yeah. And just, I'm just going to, for the audience, I'm going to take about 10 more minutes asking a few questions. And I do want people to either in the Q&A write your questions or, or even put your hand up, you know, how often do you get a chance to, you know, 
put, pose a question direct to, to a hero and, and you know someone like David Seaman. So please do put your hands up and we will get you in. Um, we'll keep the question short so more people can get involved, but please do. It's your chance to talk to David direct. Um, but I just want to talk about... Um, kind of the number two position, David. And and yeah. we talked a little bit about it. We talked about Leno, we talked about Martinez and stuff. And, it, you know, I look around the league and I guess I really thought about it. I, again, we're not allowed to say Spurs, but I'm going to say Spurs just for this question. <laughs> but, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <afterwards. laughs> but when like, Lloris got injured and Fraser Forster came in and you thought, well, actually that he's, you know, take your, take your Arsenal kind of, glasses off he's not a bad yeah. number two there but yeah. you know how how hard is it to keep a number two happy because I mean they could play literally one game in the season or they could play 37 if, if there's an yeah. injury so no, exactly how- it's hard because you know when when I was there obviously like I had people like Alex winning uh, mm. he came back and he was he was a number two and then I and then they bought Richard Wright and you know so I always had like good competition but what what it did is it, it made me work harder you know these guys were coming in and i was thinking right okay you know what I, what i can do you've seen me perform on on the, on the pitch and on tv and that and i wanted to show them how i were in training you know like i know it sounds big headed but like how good i was or how good i could be you know just to like to keep them in their place um and in you know when when you've got a number two that's that's happy but he's still quality, then it's great for the number one because he keeps pushing you, you know, and I'm sure that that's what Mike Turner's doing with Aaron. You know, he's he's pushing him. You know, we've got a few other, like the young lads coming through as well, and they're, they're going to be the same, um, you know, but, you know, for me, it's it's all about Aaron. You know, it's about him being as good as he possibly can because mm-hmm. he's got a great chance of of going all the way. And, and, and with that, I mean, like with England's number one. You know, and that's another thing that I always say, and I keep saying it to Aaron, he keeps laughing about it, and because I, I love it now that Arsenal fans are now singing England's number one. Yeah. It's great to hear that song again because it's been a long while since I left. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I think we we had Henry Winter join us recently. He was saying, you know, Henry's obviously big into England and, and was saying Pickford's just ahead because South, yeah. he basically hasn't made any mistakes for Southgate and, and that's maybe what it'll take. But that's it. That's 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 it. You know, and as soon as as soon as he does, Aaron, Aaron's got to be ready. And he is. You know, he is ready for that. Um, you know, the more experience he's getting, especially next season now, he's going to be playing in the Champions League. So that's another step. You know, yeah. and it's the step on to England. You know, I know he's already done it. You know, but he's not done it enough times for me in, at uh, at this moment. But he'll be ready for whenever uh, whenever Jordan has a, a loss of form because he, exactly like what what Henry said. You know, he's he's done really well for England, and you can't argue with that. And obviously, one of the reasons why sort of Aaron Ramsdale Ramos came to Arsenal was this whole playing out from the back and I guess the, the, you know the first time we really saw it in this country was probably when Pep Guardiola got rid of Joe Hart because he just wasn't good enough at his feet um, and obviously with Arsenal we saw it with Emi Martinez he was quite good at his feet Leno maybe just not at that level but yeah. Ramsdale was come in and just been great at his feet but I mean you know in your day if you were told to play like that how would you have reacted oh, well <laughs> so the answer I'm going to give you now is going to make you laugh because I had to deal with the new back pass rule and we weren't coached for that yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was I was around when that came in when I couldn't pick it up anymore and we were like what we can't pick it up you know so we had to deal with it like really quickly because yeah. you know, it was like a, an old, like the next season this is the new rule you know, but these guys, these guys are being trained now and they're being coached of playing it out from the bike. But there's areas to play it and there's areas not to play it. You know, and you've got and the more experience you get, you realize when you can pass it, especially down the middle, you've got to be so careful because I know that I know that a lot of a lot of the goalkeepers like to pass it down the middle to then bypass players. But when they're marked, if you knock them a dodgy ball and then they've got to control it and play it. That's where it becomes difficult. And any mistake from that player down the middle of the pitch, I mean, that can lead to goals. When it's out wide, you can get away with, with the mistakes. But when it goes down the middle, it's got to be perfect. And that's that's where I get a little bit nervous. When, you know, when I see Aaron knocking it in there, you know, because he, he sometimes he proper like fizzes it in there. Oh. And, it, and it's hard to control, you know. So, you know, and we've been caught out a couple of times, you know, where we've lost it and, mm. and it's 
considered a goal, you know, but you've got to start weighing up the the pros, you know, like how many times from passing down the middle or going through the, you know, through the lines, do we create a chance opposed to how many times it costs us a goal? Yeah, yeah. And obviously people do always will remember those goals. But I mean, it, it's ironic that, you know, this this year, I think there was Southampton scored in the first minute, which there was a bit of, a bit of an error there. But actually last year, we scored one of our perfect team goals against Southampton. Yeah. We started at the back with, with, with Aaron Ramsdale. So, yeah. It, yeah, it's it's, it's great happened, when it you know, works, and that's happened a few times. You know where it started from from Aaron, um, and you know, but it, it it's about getting the balance right. You know, doing it at the right times, mm. and, and, and I that, guess that comes. That comes. Mm. I guess just thinking back to your day as well. I mean, obviously when Arsenal Wenger came in, it wasn't completely like this playing out from the back. But he did expect you to be able to play a little bit, did he? More than other managers, yeah. and how, how yeah, was that for that you? Was, yeah, but I was I was always a sweeper keeper, you know. And, you know, a couple of times I got caught out of being a bit too far out. If you won't mention them, anyway, <laughs> we'll bag those words too. <laughs> you know, but but the you know when I asked the game, we we played we played total football, which is like which is weird because now I'm thinking of Tony Adams playing out from the back, and I was like I was as shocked as any <laughs> Arsenal fan. I was like, wow, Tony, you can play it out from the back. By the way. You know, whereas I, I was just used to him, like, getting rid of it or booting it up, and, you know, but he, he could do it. And then all, all the back four could do it, you know, and then that helped and that progressed on to, you know, what we went out and won. And, um, yeah, you know, it was just when when you're coached and you know and, you, and you're and you capable of doing it, it can work really well. We've got Stephen who's put his hand up, so I'm just going to allow Stephen in. Stephen, if you just want to unmute yourself, there should be an unmute button. Yeah, there you go. Crack on. Yeah, <laughs> no question, David. I just want to say that I was amongst those who, when you signed, saying, why are we signing the new goalie? We got a really good one. I was wrong. George Graham was right. And it was <laughs> fantastic, fantastic privilege <laughs> watching you play over all those years. You were a fantastic goalie, mate, and you were a fantastic bloke. So thanks Most very sure. much for all you have done and all you're still doing for the Arsenal <laughs> family. No, it was my pleasure, mate. You know, and what, what was funny as well is that the lads were like, Cody, just do the twist and the fans will love you. And I was like, what, the twist? They went, yeah, look, he used to do the twist and the fans left. And I was like, oh, my word. And I did it a couple of times and, and, it, and it worked, you know. So I just, yeah, I've had, I've had amazing times at Arsenal and I've had some great fun with the fans as well. I'm going to bring Chloe in, who there's a few questions in the Q&A. And if there are any, anyone else that wants to put their hand up, please do. There's currently no hands up, so as soon as you put your hand up, you'll get on quite quick. Chloe, there's been a few questions in, hasn't there? There have. Um, so Sarah Healy has asked whether our, her 12-year-old would like to know whether when you were a child, you played any other position. Um, yeah, I used to, but I always I was always good at being a goalkeeper and I was always tall. You know, and um, that's how it all started from like joining the big boys in the in the playground, and they saying to me, "Oh, you're tall, you're going goal." And then I started getting praise from the big boys, so that gave me confidence, and, and then I started really enjoying it. But my school team were really good, and sometimes I would literally like just touch the ball two or three times. You know, no saves, just actually touch it or kick it. Um, so I used to play striker, and uh, and I used to enjoy that a bit. But I always knew. That I was a better goalkeeper, and the other thing is that I loved being a goalkeeper as well. You know, and I think that's that's the main thing. I do I do speak to kids, and they say, "Oh yeah, I go in goal sometimes," and that. And I say, "Yeah, but what else do you do? Do you, know, do you prefer playing striker or mid or whatever?" And they were like, "Well, yeah, but sometimes I go in." I'm thinking, "No, you've got to love being a goalkeeper." Thank you. Um, Mark Long is asking if you could transplant any outfield player. That you played with into today's team, who would you pick? Thierry. <laughs> well, I, I, well, you've said only one. I would transfer the whole team. <laughs> <laughs> I'd let Aaron take my gloves. That'd be all right. But no, the, <laughs> you know, we had a great team. You know, we had a few great teams. Um, and but you know, I, I do a I do a podcast every every week. I see even says podcast. Mm. And when I get Arsenal players, uh, or like my old Arsenal players on, or actual Arsenal fans, I always ask them, you've got one choice, Henri or Burkham, and it causes all sorts of trouble. You know, but I would I would put Thierry in there because Thierry was, he was an all-round player. You know, he, he could get the ball off me just outside the area and go the whole length and score a goal. 
you know, whereas Dennis was different, you know, he was further up the field and he was a magician at what he did. But yeah, well, it would be but, scary on me. I, I'm not going to say what the answer was because people would have to go to your podcast to say, but I remember <laughs> Alex Brooker's answer to that. It was magic. I'm not going to say yeah. what it was. Let people go and listen. <laughs> but Alex Brooker's, I, I know Alex fairly well and stuff like that yeah. as well. So I know he, he kind of is, you know, obviously it's his job to be a comedian, but his answer was great, wasn't it? The reason why it was great as well. Yeah. So I'll let, I'll let people go and listen to that. <laughs> that it was, it was real. It's, it's good for that. And I was like, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know. You didn't I'll give you a little taste of it. I was like, Dennis is not like that and anyway yeah. you have to go and watch it you have to go and yeah. look it up <laughs> <laughs> Chloe so thinking about other forwards who did you most worry about facing um I didn't worry about anybody if I'm honest um there was a couple of people that always seemed to score past me like Gary Lineker always used he always used to score past me even when he was at Everton before he joined that other team in North London <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> Robbie Fowler Robbie Fowler had this knack of like just being there he scored a hat trick past me at Anfield in three and a half minutes you know and it, you know I was making saves and he'd be there for the tapping you know then I'd make a block and Martin would come in and block it as well and then the rebound would fall to Robbie and he'd knock it in he was one of those players that always had this knack of like getting in the right position at the right time past me so yeah those two were they were annoying let's say not worrying <laughs> And thinking about memorable moments um, and and goals, um, Mark Stewart, like myself, was uh, behind the goal when Gaza scored <laughs> in that FA Cup semi-final. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he's just interested to understand, you know, the goalkeeper position has changed so much in modern football. How yeah. f- much further do you think it could evolve? Um. It won't evolve a massive amount. Um, I think the biggest change we've seen is goalkeepers playing with their feet at the back, you know, playing it out from the back, short passes. And I think that's been the biggest um, in, improvement. Um, the speed of the ball is making it a little bit more difficult as well. Um, you know, because obviously I go into training and I actually get to train with these balls and I see them and I'm like, these are fast. You know, and even, even to the point where with... Um, the game against Real Madrid in Madrid when De Bruyne scored his goal, the speed that that ball left his foot is frightening, you know, because that it, that seemed to be another step forward. I know that that's, I think that's an Adidas ball and the ball that we use in the Premier League is a Nike ball. Um, you know, so the balls are getting faster, you know, but obviously the more you train with them, you, your reactions will get sharper, but they seem to be making these balls for the strikers, not the goalkeepers. <laughs> they want more goals. There's the goal is union. <laughs> <laughs> and Vinyl has asked, what was your favourite moment in an Arsenal shirt? Oh. And there's a couple of other follow-up questions. I'll ask them all together. What was your best save? Yeah. And you might have um, given us a little clue about this earlier, perhaps, but who's been your player of the year in the current Arsenal team? All right. Um, so my favourite moment, is that is so hard. And, and I get asked this question a, a quite a lot. You know, my first season, we won the league, which, you know, coming in after John and doing that, only letting 18 goals in in that season was was brilliant, you know, and it was perfectly because it just set me up perfectly with the Arsenal fans and Arsenal. Um, but I would say my first double, you know, and I, I know it sounds a bit, you know, it's, it's yeah, the first double. Um, you know, got, and, and for the reason being, one of the reasons being is that Bob, Bob Wilson, always used to say to me in train, I'm the only goalie to have won the double. <laughs> I'm the only Arsenal goalkeeper to have won the double. And I was like, Argh. and I'm sure he was doing it it to wind me up and motivate me and then we did it and then obviously we did it again in 2002 and so I've got the I've got the nice answer to him I'm like, yeah I'm the only goal, goalkeeper to the double double Bob <laughs> you know so that that was that's nice and then uh, what was the the second one save which save, best save. 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 I think it's quite obvious it's the um pesky Scalido one at Sheffield United when we played Sheffield United in the semi-final mm. you know when I scooped it out of the back um the, one of the most pleading points of that save was that I was 39 when I made that save and there was a lot of people questioning was I too old 
Um, and it just shows you that I wasn't, and you're not, when you can, if you can produce like that at that age, it just shows you that age doesn't matter. Mm. Um, you know, that, that's, that was great for me. And it was great that, cause that led on to going to the final against Southampton. I was captain for the day and it was my last game for Arsenal, you know, and we won the trophy, you know, so it was, uh, just a good save there as well to their that mm. tall frontman Overton. Overton was yeah, it? So, right. Yeah, near, yeah, you know, that was a good yeah. came well, out. You know, the, the Sheffield United one was special. You know, it was my one thousand game and all that sort of stuff. But we were struggling in the game. You know, if, mm. if Arsenal fans remember, we were only one and up, and it was it was a uh, it was a tough day. And um, you know, you let that in, and then you don't know what happens. Um, but the other side of that is that if Phil Jackie Elka misses the rebound, well, scores <laughs> the rebound, my save never gets mentioned. Yeah, you know, I was chatting to Aaron about this um, yesterday when I was doing an interview with him, talking about his save at Leicester, you know, and, it, and the comparisons are really, really close because he makes the brilliant save and then the rebounder, I don't, it, it, like the rebound hits his arm and stays out or almost yeah. just stops on the line and then it gets clear. And if that rebound goes in, his save never gets mentioned again. And now it's one of his favourite saves. It's not my favourite save that I've seen him make. I love the one against Salah at Liverpool, mm. but but Aaron loved the save. Yeah, yeah, that's but, quite um, yeah. So that was my favourite save. And then what was the next one? Sorry, player of the year. Player, yeah. player oh, of the year yeah. this year. Oh, that is a so there's three in mind. I feel obviously Aaron's in with a great shout, you know, because of the improvement he's made and the saves. You know, we were chatting over a lot of saves and. We didn't even have time to talk about all of them. <laughs> there was that many. Yeah, yeah. Hang on, Aaron. Like you made all these saves. Where's the defenders? <laughs> <laughs> Having a cup of tea. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. So like straight away, question defenders. Um, <laughs> and then obviously Saka, he's been brilliant. Again, you know, and, and he's like he's becoming like one of our experienced players. That just shows you how good he is. Um, um Odegaard. I think Odegaard's been really special this season. Um, you know, I think Arsenal fans are appreciating him a lot more now. You know, even to the people were questioning him about him becoming captain at such a young age. Mm. You know, Tony was the same, he was really young when he took over the captaincy at Arsenal. Um, but with, with Martin, we've got a real special player there, you know, that totally understands the game. Um, and can un- unlock defenses with little passes. You know, that's, that's exactly what you need in a team like ours. You know, you need those players that can just find a little pass down the side of a defender to put in, you know, whether it's Saka or whether it's Martinelli or Jesus, you know, these little, little passes that unlock defences and that's what he's got. Do you feel captaincy's changed as well? Obviously, you played under Tony Adams, um, played under probably Alan Shearer for a bit for England as well. Yeah. Um, it, and now you, you get the more led by, lead by example captains, uh, yeah. you know, a lot more. And, and well, that's, where that the game, that's where the game's changed quite a bit as well. Um because the lads are they're more of a group, you know. So there's not like one one leader. There's there's quite a lot of captains, and they might not all be vocal, but they they lead by example on the pitch, you know. And that's where you get that togetherness, especially with Arsenal, you know, where they have the huddles at the before the game and then at half time. And even when when players get injured or whatever, they, they're straight over to the manager, you know, to um to to find out what's going on and what we need to change, you know. So it's it's a group mentality, but. You know, with with Odegaard, we've got a totally different captain. You know, he's he's not massively vocal on the pitch, but he leads by example, and he's he's got the respect of the players as well. You know, and he's also got the the backup with the with Jacker. You know, because mm. you know after all he all that happened with him, you know, this season he's been brilliant. There's no doubt about that. Um, but he's still he's still a captain off the field, if you know what I mean. You know, mm. the lads really appreciate him and totally respect him. Mm. But it's important to have those kind of. I mean, I guess in your day as well, you talked about Thierry, like you know, he wasn't. He, well, he was an Arsenal captain eventually, but he was a leader on the pitch. When you're one nil down, you want to get yeah. give him the ball and think he will lead us out of this. Yeah, but that you know, we we were we were different back then <clears throat> because we had more people that were vocal. You know, I had my back four with like Lee, Tony, Boldy, Martin, and then and then Nigel. You know, then Ashley after that. I know all all those five or six players, they were all really vocal on the pitch, mm. you know, and, and they they any of them could have easily been the captain. Mm. Yeah. Chloe, any more? I've got a hand up so I can bring someone in, but go on. 
I've got I've got one more to go to now. So you've mentioned about working alongside Bob and coaching um, and Chris West, who would like me to say thank you because you kindly, um, along with Tony Adams, donated some merchandise that helped him raise money when he was uh, running the London Marathon in 2020. So thank you from Chris for that. (laughs) (laughs) But his question is, how good was Bob as a coach for you? Yeah. Um, he, he, he was brilliant for me because not only did he coach me at Arsenal, he coached me at QPR. Um, and he was re- he was my first real proper goalkeeping coach. Um, and with Bob, what Bob used to do is he used to give me and the other goalkeepers as well, he used to give us confidence in training. So it wasn't just in matches where you get it, you know, in training, you'd, you'd get confidence from him. Where, say, in a drill, you'd be doing uh, normally about six to eight saves. If you did like a worldy save within three or four shots, you'd be like, right, stop, out you go. You know, so you'd leave that session like feeling so good. And then you go into the next session. You know, that was that was like Bob's little trick where he, he would make sure that you had confidence coming out of the sessions. You know, sometimes you had to stay for quite a while before you made it. <laughs> but you know, it wasn't that often. But um, you know, and, and Bob understood, you know, and, and when you've got a goalkeeper that's that's actually played for Arsenal and now he's your coach. You know that's special because you know you know I knew what he'd been through. I knew I know what he'd won. He kept telling me quite a lot, if I'm honest. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> he'd won a lot. He, he <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you know, so it it really helped. You know, and I could really relate to him. You know, and plus yeah, he's a proper guy. You know, he's a proper gentleman as well. You know, he's not just he wasn't just my coach. He was he was one of my best friends as well. Yeah. Um, Chloe, we'll come back to you in a bit. Uh, I think Manoj, I'm going to let you in. You've had your hand up for a while. If you want to unmute yourself, there you go. Crack on, go on. Hey there, David. It's very nice to speak. Hello, mate. Um, given you are part of one of the best back lines in Premier League history, uh, what advice would you give to the current back line, particularly the defenders, in terms of how we can have a little bit more consistency, not leak so many goals? Since you know, in the last ten days, I think uh, last ten games, we've, we've conceded quite a lot. So, what is going yeah. wrong? How we can improve? And well, you know, you, you're missing players. You're missing big players. Obviously, Saliba's been out for quite a while. Um, you know, and then when when that changes, then a new a new guy has to come back in. And you know, and, it, and it's been difficult. Um, you know, and it's and it's been at a time when the pressure's really been on. You know, so that's when you need your experienced players, the guys that have been playing all season. You know, to be at their best and. Um, yeah, it's just you know when when people talk about the back four that I was in front uh, that I was behind, um, it's just sheer hard work on the training ground as well, you know. And that that back four wasn't by fluke or luck; it was by sheer hard work because George Graham and Stuart Houston used to drill them like almost probably three or four times a week on working the back four. <clears throat> excuse me, and you know, and I'm sure that you've heard about this rope that used to be used that if one player went in, that meant that the others took in. That that all happened, and it happened a lot, you know. And so that back four was was almost like a computer. They knew exactly where to go whenever one of them moved into a different position, you know. And it's just through through hard work, and that's and I'm sure that they're doing that on the on the training feet on the training pitch. But um, yeah, it, it, and but it is tough when you know your one of your best players gets injured for the running, and he, and he never features again, you know for in that running because, um, you know, with, with Saliba, it, it was it was almost like getting a new player for this season. You know, the way that he started off, you know, and being out on loan, and that just shows you how good it can be sometimes when they go out on loan and get all that experience, you know, because he came back as though he hadn't been away, you know, and it was like getting a new player that was really good and, all, and already used to the Premier League. Mm. And then also the combination of losing Tommy Yasu meant there was less flexibility with Ben yeah. White. You could move him over and... It's the no, lack of options, Rob, basically. Exactly, and Rob came in, and you know, and okay, he, he made a couple of mistakes, but that that happens in in a season, you know. But, you know, it was just, it was all, it, it it wasn't as as we wanted it to be. You know, what I mean, it wasn't like our strongest team that we ever really that we ever really got out in that running. Uh, Chris, gonna bring you in. I'll meet yourself, Chris West. Go for Hi, it. David. Hello, mate. You're right. Yeah, not too bad. Thank you. Yeah, thanks again for your sponsor and your, your donation for the marathon. Um, <laughs> it was brilliant. Um, but uh, anyway, I've got two questions. I've been cheeky. 
I watched a program about um, Venable was on um, Sky a few weeks ago, and uh, yeah. you were you, you're clipping it. You were quite shocked when he stepped down and and what have you. So my question is, if he'd have stayed on, do you think he wouldn't World Cup in '98? Because I actually think that squad would have done with Hoddle if we're not had oh. ten men. Secondly, with your international managers and Arsene and George, who's the best manager you had and why? So technically, oh. so, um, yeah. The, the, Yes, so I just read the first question about with Terry. Would it would we have got to the well? We'll, we'll never know, obviously. But he was brilliant. He was by far my best England manager. Um, tactically, he was so good. And to be fair, Glenn was as well. But Terry was different. Terry was everybody loved Terry, and they loved the way that Terry worked. And he and he managed it really well. You know, you knew when he would have a laugh with you, but you'd only be able to go so far. And he'd be like, right, that's enough. You know, and he, he, he knew exactly how to how far to let players go, but then when to stop and get serious. Um, yeah, and it's and it's a shame that we lost him to, to nothing to do with uh, football. You know, obviously uh, tax issues and whatever it was chasing him. But um, yeah, that was a shame. Um, but but Glenn tactically was really good. Another England manager we lost to nothing to do with football. Um, so that's my moan. There you go. Um, <laughs> and then the best out of all of them, cool, I've never been asked that question before. Really? Because, no, not out of all of them, because what I normally say, they say, oh, who's your best England manager and mm. who's your best club manager? Mm. And my two answers are Terry Venables and Arsene Wenger. And if I had to choose out of one of them, it would be Arsene, because the amount that he changed at this club is frightening you know the way not just the way that we play but <clears throat> where we train the new training ground the new the, the Emirates Stadium you know but even even Highbury mm. you know the way that he influenced everything apart from which might upset a lot of Arsenal players uh, Arsenal fans is he wasn't in charge of the money you know mm. because people thought that he could go and buy whoever he wanted he wasn't in charge of that um, and I just wanted to put that out there, um, mm. you know. So, but he was he was brilliant, awesome. And he, he changed everything <clears throat> when he first came. You know, even the way that we ate, the way that we trained, the way that we looked after ourselves. Even the Tuesday club got abandoned. <laughs> <laughs> Along with the Mars you know, But you know why? Because we we knew that if we'd had a, had a couple of drinks the day before and we were in training the next day you would stand out like a sore thumb because the standard in training was really high and you had to be really on it because we knew that Arsenal would pick players. If they had a good week training, there was a great chance they were going to get in the team that weekend. Yeah. There's a couple of questions that I'm going to come back to sort of your last kind of season a little bit and just at the ending because it's been talked about a lot but just a couple of actually interesting questions here. There's one from Sandy that says, I was always confident uh, when when there was a penalty against us that you would kind of save it what was your method for saving them and what was your mindset when you were uh... so I would you know I know nowadays people they have it all written on their water bottles or mm. little iPads or whatever they get um, but I I did it on the way that they ran at the ball the mm. angle that they ran at the ball dictated to me which way I was going to go I would always go oh, excuse me I would always go one way or the other but what I used to do is I used to wait until they, they would run in looking at me. Then right at the last second, they would look down to kick the ball. Mm. And as soon as they would look down, that's when I would go. So they didn't know which way I was going. You know, then, and then every time I got a chance, like whether it was on TV or on, in the press, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I've got this secret recipe. I've got this secret theory. <laughs> and it just put it out there. And then the, the, the strikers are putting the ball down thinking, oh, no, what's he, what, where's he going? What's the secret thing he's got? I just played on it a bit, you know, but... Um, you thrived on it as well, I still right? do it now, you know, I still do it now, where I, you know, I can watch a penalty shoot out or penalties that are on TV and I'll point which way and and I still get it pretty right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, Obviously, I think, I'm, I'm not moving as, as quick as I used to, but <laughs> I'm still yeah, I think, right. <laughs> I think I think I saw you play a charity game, was it against Madrid? Was it Was it at Madrid? Yeah, yeah. That was, yeah. That was probably your last... Because I think yeah, in the home no, leg, the you, last, no, you... the last ten that I ever played was Harry's Heroes. 
And, oh, of uh, course, of course, yeah, 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 and yeah. Was the Harry's Heroes on tour, and it, we were played away, and I and I made this save, and the ball popped out, and I tried to get up, and honestly, I could hardly move, <laughs> and I was like, "This is not happening ever again." And I said it on the on the te- television, then, and we beat we beat Germany again. <laughs> and I went, "That's the last time you'll ever see yeah. me play football," yeah. and, and I and I don't want to play anymore now. You know, even yeah. even when I played in soccer aid. I was playing the first 45 minutes and I was like counting the clock down, you know, because yeah, yeah. You know, so that's gone. But the coaching side of it is, yeah. especially at Soccer Aid, is something that I'm really enjoying. And, and yeah. then giving a little bit a little bit back at Arsenal is, is even more special. But the last time you were in an Arsenal shirt, then was was that was was it that Madrid game at the Bernabeu? Was- in front of a full house because we were there. I know. Yeah, went out that, for that was summer it. break. Yeah, <laughs> wasn't I wasn't mean, quite expecting it to be that full, if we're honest. It was, it was, oh God, when we, I remember when we, we went to the Bernabeu, there was horns outside. You thought you were in a real, like a massive carnival type thing. And then I remember going into the Bernabeu, we were astonished how packed it was to watch yeah, Legends. I and I don't think you and played the first half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of their players look a lot younger, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, no. They were like just come off the training pitch. But yeah, that was that was special. And then I played in, I tried to play in one at um, at the Emirates. I think it was an Inter Milan game. Yeah. And, um, AC, I got, AC, I got injured in the warm up. So in there you the go. There, there's yeah. the times that you get. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, here's, here's another good question actually from Mark Stewart. And it says getting beaten at the near post as a goalkeeper seems to be a crime, according to Pundit. Yeah. Is that correct, or or do you think that's a bit harsh? Any of the people that say that, I bet you never been in goal. Whatever you want, they've never been in goal. Exactly, they've never not. You won't get one goalkeeper saying, "Oh, you got beat at the near post," because you can't. If you're going to cover that near post and make sure they don't cut, they don't score there, you're leaving a big gap at the far post. So you've got to, you've got to play the percentages. You know, you, if it's top corner near post. You know, or above you, which has happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, with pace, that's that's that will always beat you. You know, if the, if the pace that really that really gets you. Um, yeah. But you can't overcover. You know, and say, oh, right, I'm not going to get beat at the near post, but get beat beat at the far post all the time. Then it's you're not doing your job right. You know, so you there is times where you do get beat at your near post. And even as a keeper, I mean, did you watch? Did you watch Man City Madrid yesterday? No, I was fishing. Oh, <laughs> I, was, I was fishing. I was fishing on the river test, if I'm honest. Um, fair enough, fair enough. But, and, but just I was listening to it on the radio on the way back. Yeah, but just as a keeper, I mean, Courtois had made two absolute yeah. worldy saves. There was one Harlan head up, pretty much he was right there, and there was one that he, he just got his fingertips on it. It was it was really good. But then obviously Bernardo Silva scored at his near post with. I mean, how as a keeper as well? How demoralising is that when you produce a couple of worldies and then you just get beaten and then you think, well, what can I, I do and now? Then, and then, yeah, you you're making all those saves and you're still getting beat four 0 You know that that is tough. You know, but then you know you know that they're they're one off games. They don't that doesn't happen all the time. Yeah, and especially with a team like Madrid, that will you know in in a in a little like weird way I think Courtois will be happy that he had, he had a, a chance of making those saves to show people what he can do Yeah, because yeah. you can't always influence the goal you know you can't always do something about it you know you can always ask yourself what else could I have done you know even if it's not your you know you're not your fault um, you can always say oh what else could I have done that might have influenced the striker or could I have guessed a little bit early or could I have done whatever something different to try and save it you know yeah. that's why uh, you know, I say that to the goalkeepers now at Arsenal. You know, when you let a goal in, even if it's not your fault, always ask yourself, what else could I have done? It's mm. a good way of looking at things. One yeah. from Neil Bradford about, does David feel there was as much um, physical, kind of the, the physical thing in the box at set pieces, or is it worse now, or, or are refs more protected now? I'm sorry, do our keepers more protected now? That kind of stuff, has it changed? Um, no, I think it's turned complete circle. Um, and I think now when <clears throat> when you watch goalkeepers on corners, they're getting pinned in and the refs are letting it go. You know, so you've got to start being a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more cute, you know, because the guys are getting good at it. We, we've got one ourselves in, in Ben White. You know, he's really good at pinning the goalkeeper in yeah, at, yeah. at the last second as well. You know, he like he's out of the way, out of the way. And then as soon as the ball's getting knocked in, he, he blocks the goalie up perfectly. And and does it without making it obvious or or actually fouling him, 
Um, but the guys are like that. They are good at, at stuff like that. So then, you know, walk away. Get your arms up. Don't put your arms down because if you put your arms down, the strikers will hold them down. And, um, you know, and then don't take them into a different part of the, the area where you don't want to be, but put them there, then move out the way. Don't just stand still, mm. you know, be, be lively, shout to the referee, tell him, tell him that, that he's holding you or he's blocking you. Just make him aware. You know, there's all sorts of little things that you can do, but I must have a admit, little bit of advantage. Yeah, but at, at the moment it is getting back to almost like a free for all on corners, you know, which is difficult. Mm. Would you like to see more? This is from Cathal. Would you like to see more specialised goalkeeper pundits to analyse goalkeeping performances rather than outfield players who have never actually been in goal? Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, because the goal, the goal, the goalkeepers they know what they're talking about. You know, surprisingly. Funny enough, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, but even even when I was playing, you know, and if if like the manager, if like George or Arson. Like say, oh, could you have come for that cross, or could you just stop that? I'd be like, well, I don't, you know, and I'm going to have a chat with Bob. No. <laughs> I wouldn't listen to them. You're going, what is the other? Uh, <laughs> they didn't know. They didn't know what you know. They were just like looking at it as a you know, and then thinking, oh, maybe, but they they didn't know. You know, until you ask someone that knows what they're talking about, then yeah. you start. Yeah. yeah. Just want to um, just looking through the questions again. There's quite a few on ones we've covered i mean is it too soon to talk about naeem or or is it is it or are we are we okay? no it's part of me you know it's part it's, of what happened you but know, the question is more from a mental side of it what yeah but that's, when that's it happened, the goalkeeper's yeah. life for you you know you you you're playing games like that the final of the european cup you know the, the game before i say three penalties in the shootout yeah. in Sampdoria. we go to the final i let i had a good game actually i made some saves in that game but everybody remembers the goal you know, and it is a mistake, you know, as, as much of a, a fluke it was. Same with Ronaldinho. That was the same. You know, it's the same thing. We give them another 50 balls or 100 balls. They'd never be able to do it again. Mm. You know, so it, it, but that happens. And then as a goalkeeper, you've got to get on with it. You've got to be able to put that to the side. Okay, with the ninth thing, it was like the last minute of extra time. So there was no real Not time much. to return. Um, But with the Ronaldinho thing, it, we'd still got half an hour to play in the game. You know, and I'm thinking, come on, lad, you know, like, get me out of this. Get me out of this. I know, but, you know. You think he meant it, Ronaldinho? I, think he meant I know he it. didn't. Gilberto no. Silva told me straight after the oh. game that he didn't. Oh, well. There you <laughs> but go, But it then. doesn't matter, it still went in. Wow, well, yeah, so it's, yeah. It, whether he meant it or not, it still went in, you know, and it was, you know, for me, that's a goalkeeping mistake because it's from mm. a long way out. You know, it's like with Aaron with his his goal in the European game when he mm. the guy beat him. That's yeah, it. yeah. Sporting, could have been worse, Aaron. It could have been an ex Tottenham player that scored. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. True, true. Um, last couple of questions. It's got oh, sort of six or so minutes left. Um, time wasting. So it's been a massive debate and, and goalkeepers oh. and 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 the Southampton yeah. keeper. I will tell you what, I made a oh, joke no. that he, that, he I, bounced I, it more I, than LeBron yeah, James yeah. does, but it was ridiculous. Uh. You know, and, and it's that's that, that is down to the referee, you know. And, and I noticed that in that game, the referee only went over to him like with right, about yeah. 10 minutes to go, uh, like do it early, you know. And if he books him early, then it, he ain't going to do it. Do it. No, uh, you know, it, it's the referees that are to blame, uh, you know. Like, and if they are doing it, make sure that you add it on, make sure you get a message to the fourth official to say, add this time on, you know, because he's just getting down, you know. But if they sort it out early and he books the goalie early, then. That stops. Mm. And there's yeah, a, a few times, and then and then book him, and then it, that just that'll get rid of all of it. Yeah, a, a man you know well, and who we've also had an event with recently, David Dean, has got a campaign about kind of stopping, yeah, you know, a bit more like America, where you stop the clock a little bit and stuff like that. Do you think yeah. we need radical changes like that, or is it a little bit more? No, maybe not think, that radical. Yeah. No, I don't think it's it's that sort of things needed. Um, stopping the clock because the games would would end up being like two hours long. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll miss our last trades. <laughs> oh, no, exactly. <laughs> Imagine that in a night game. Of the Emirates <laughs> getting out of Arsenal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But no, I I think the referees need to get tougher on it. They also need to get tougher on another point is where the goalkeepers are blatantly. Delaying penalty takers, that needs to be cut out. I don't like to see that, you know. And I've seen, I've seen a lot of goalies do it. And I'm like, no, just get get on your line and save the ball. Yeah, you know, not getting in their faces and all that. It's just 
it's almost bordering on unsportsmanlike behaviour. Mm. You know, it's not that I don't like to see it. You know, I mean, trying... to, I mean, I'm not saying Aaron does it, and, and Emmy Martinez he's is done it a worse, bit. Yeah, but he's done it. I mean, have you talked to him about that? I mentioned it about when when um, was it Fernandez? Fernand, Bruno Fernandez, yeah, Fernand, man, yeah. That, when he, yeah. he he missed the penalty, celebrated no, no, in front of him. Fernando, isn't it? Uh, no, yeah, Fernandez, yeah, he, he hit the Fernandez. post. Yeah. yeah. And he and he hits the post, and Aaron's like jumping up right in front of me. I was like, "Hang on a minute, mate! You didn't even save it." <laughs> yeah. He did go a bit Martin Keown less there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there, there must be something yeah. in the air up at Old Trafford. I think that yeah, yeah. when we won the league up there. But anyway, <laughs> uh, ironically, Patrick Vieira mentioned that to Roy Keane live on Sky the other day as well, which which got a, got, got a laugh. <laughs> What's your view on VAR? Obviously, it wasn't around when when you were playing. It, yeah. It's around now, very much around now. What what is your view? I like it. Um, I think I think we get the the right decisions more often than we get the wrong ones. Um, you know, so you know the offside rules a bit. You know, because the game's all about goals. As much as I hate goals on a goal, <laughs> 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 that's why I used to love one 0 to the Arsenal. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, you know, like the offside to be offside on a you know like your little toe or your big toe just sticking out. That's mm. I think they should go the whole totally the other way, where if the, if the striker has got daylight between him and the last defender, then he's offside. Do you know what I mean? You know, yeah. so if the, his whole body could be in front of the striker, mm. and but if there's daylight, then it's offside. You know, if any part of his body is overlapping with the defender, then play on. You know, it gives the benefit of the doubt to the to the striker. Um, that would be my only change. Um, other than that, you know, I I don't I don't mind. That they have to take so long, so long as they get it right. Yeah, mm. you know that's if they're going to take that long, make sure that it's right. Make sure you've covered everything. You know we've we've been victim of that at Arsenal. You know where they've checked something and then they didn't check another bit of it. Yeah, uh, Brent was yeah. Yeah. to that. You know, so yeah, but I I'm, I'm all for VAR. Yeah, and then just I'm sort of we've, we've had a good load of questions and stuff. I'm just going to kind of start to close up a little bit now. I mean, one of the questions though is which I'm going to expand on, is does David regret not taking the role as Arsenal goalkeeper coach when it was offered in that last season? But tell us a little bit about that whole... I know I know you've told that story a few times about yeah. you, were, you were on holiday and stuff like that and the phone rang, but t- tell us a little bit about it and your mindset during it. Yeah, well, I, if I'm honest, that was... So when I played against Southampton in the cup final, which turned out to be my last game for Arsenal, I didn't know that that was going to be my last game. Um, probably why I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it so much anyway because I was we'd won another trophy and I was the captain for the day, so that was brilliant. You knew it was your last game. You might not have called Patrick up to hold it with you. <laughs> no, I don't mind. You lost Patrick, your last game. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, but, the, but then you know, then I get the obviously the offer of, of being a number three goalkeeper. You know, obviously Jens was coming in and Stuart was going to be trying. They were trying to push Stuart Taylor into a number two. Nice. And, I, and then you know, then I was going to be like number three goalkeeper and the goalkeeping coach, but there was a seventy percent wage drop, right? And I, I I felt at that time that I could play at least another year, and I'd got offers on the table, and and that that's why I went to Man, Man City. I got offers from Birmingham and a couple of others, um, but I wanted to stay in the Premier League. I wanted to see, you know, if I could still do it, you know, but it. it it didn't turn out that way. Um, do I regret not getting the goalkeeper? No, because I look forward to retiring and, and I wanted a bit of my time back. Um, because when, trust me, when when, it, when you're a footballer, your your diary's out of the window. You're, you're training all the time. You're in hotels and then you're playing in games and then you're travelling to different countries, but you're not even seeing the country. All you're seeing is the airport, stadium, back to the airport, back home. And it's, being a footballer is... On that side of it is tough. You know, you're away from your family for quite a long time as well. Um, and I didn't want to go back into the football hours. Do you know what I mean? I wanted a bit of time. I wanted my time to to do other stuff like go fishing and play my golf and do my skating and all all this sort of stuff. You know, it was um, it just you know I've not I've not regretted it at all. I really enjoy going back to Arsenal now. Mm. And if they offered me a full time job, I would say no. Because I don't want to be a full-time goalkeeping coach. I want to be a part-time one because it suits my lifestyle now. And is there anything else left you want to achieve? Is there anything, or is it just a case of <sighs> see where life takes you now? 
no just carry on being happy that's all that's yeah. what it's all about yeah you know and, yeah. and i am you know and i'm and i'm still busy i still get asked to do lots of stuff and like we said if we started this program this this tonight by saying i still don't get enough time to go fishing <laughs> so it's, i'm doing something right but not well, everything <laughs> are you still still coming to watch our store a fair bit that was one of the questions actually yeah no, not lots to... I, get, I get invited um every now and then by my uh by our friend paul white in the diamond club and uh, yeah, yeah. It's a very nice place to watch arsenal play football that is yeah that. yeah um, you know, and, and and I do my VIP tours at Arsenal as well. You know, yeah. I do about three or four of them a season. I've actually got one this Sunday that's sold out. Mm. So you know, it's, it's it's nice. You know, and it's nice to go around and then show them show fans the dressing room. They run the pitch and sit in the dugout, do question and answer, and then they have then they have lunch in the Diamond Club. And it's a mm. it's a great day. It's not on a match day, obviously. It's it's, it's this Sunday. There'll be the, the ground will be empty, but it's yeah. um, something that I like. I just I like being in and around the club. You know, because the club is special, you know, and another thing that everybody says, when you leave Arsenal, you realise how good Arsenal are and how good the Arsenal is. Um, yeah. Um, and have you sort of got a relationship with Mikel Arteta a little bit through going to the training only, ground or is it? Only, is yeah, we, it's one better. of mutual uh, respect, you know, and, yeah. and when we see each other, you know, we say hello, shake hands and that, you know, but he's he, he's got a job to do. Quite busy. It's, <laughs> it, it's a job that I would never take. I would never, <laughs> ever want to be a manager. Yeah. I was, you know, at, at one time it might have been a goalkeeping coach, but now it's, no, I, I, I totally respect what he's doing, but mm. it's tough. It really yeah. is tough. And finally, just tell me what the shirts they are. I know you kind of told me before. But <laughs> that was so off air. Yeah, yeah. So the yellow one's my Arsenal double, the second double. Two thousand two. That's yeah. from the FA Cup final. Um, the one over that is my England versus Argentina shirt when we beat them one nil in the World Cup in Japan, signed by all the squad. Mm. And I've got a Michael Owen shirt there, signed by the England squad, and then my England shirt when I was captain. My one and only time as being captain for England. Who was that against? Uh, against Moldova. And it was oh. the first game after the loss of Princess Diana. You know, so it was a very hard... Yeah. Yeah, it emotional was hard. Game. Yeah, emotional, yeah. hard day or night. Yeah. But yeah, there are, there are a few other shirts, but they're, they're a very yeah. special one. Yeah, no, absolutely. David, it's been fantastic talking to you for the last hour. Uh, thank you for giving your time. I know you're busy and we've probably oh. stopped you from going fishing today on quite a nice <laughs> evening as well. So No, no, I like to be at the training. I'm coaching tomorrow, so I'm going to the training ground tomorrow. So but... Oh, fine. So you'll be in and amongst the lads. And yeah, yeah. well, give give the boys our love and tell them we, we obviously love them. And um, oh, hopefully yeah. this sort of events like this also remind you how fond, it, you know, how people, how how much supporters remember you and love you. Yeah. And when we announced oh, you oh, were coming cool. on. And it's, it's great. It's great to be, to be at the Emirates now because, you know, I've noticed a massive difference this season. You know, the way that the fans are getting behind the players is brilliant. Yeah. So just, thank you for them as well. Yeah, just feels like it's all, it's back to, Back to the Arsenal, you know, yeah, we lost that exactly. for a little while. But yeah, back, and let's make sure that continues. Absolutely. David, thank you very much. Take Brilliant. care and, and I'm sure I'll see you soon. Cheers, thanks. Thanks to every everyone who tuned in. Thanks to members who joined this live. Thanks to members who listen to the recording or potentially even listen to the podcast. Um, stay safe. Enjoy the last couple of games of the season. Um Probably not what we wish for, but let's, you know, if you are going to that Wolves game, make sure you do stay for that lap of appreciation because the players definitely deserve it in my eyes. So thank you. Take care um, and good night. Bye, bye, bye.